The findings are shocking and they'll disgust Australian sports fans. If you want to cheat, we will catch you. Shandor Earl has today been issued with an infraction notice. I do maintain my uh, innocence. You've got a player going to a registered doctor, getting a consultation and getting an injection. Do you think there was anything wrong with it? Admissions were made regarding the use and trafficking of peptide CJC 1295. Can I get in trouble for this? Is this, is this a banned bad. substance? And he said no, and he went through his process with WADA and how he goes about things, and he assured me on a number of occasions that nothing was banned. The blackest day in Australian sport. It sent shockwaves through our code and vowed to end careers. Our very special guest tonight on League Life is Shandor Earl. Shandor, thank you so much for joining us. I really do appreciate it. Ah, thank you. It's a pleasure. Looking yeah. back on those events from four years ago, we had federal ministers and investigators saying that those who had knowledge or, or involvement in systematic cheating mm -hmm. should come forward and be honest, and that will result in a less severe punishment. Do you think that that was... That was that was your case. Well, I know we <laughs> we know it is now. Um, unfortunately, at the time, uh, really there was no way of really understanding whether that was directly because of me. I remember explaining the first day I really it came to light was when everyone else did. Um, I think it was February March when the when it hit the headlines and the name Stephen Dan came about. Well, that's when I thought, oh well, hang on, what's happened here? But in terms of what they were, the points they were making there, um, yeah, I don't think myself or anyone else really thought that that's what they were a part of. Did you know what a peptide was? Well, it's, it's really hard because in hindsight, like back then, really no one had any idea. Obviously I do now, but what was explained as, yeah, no one ever had heard of a peptide and what was explained to me as, you know, amino acids and this sort of stuff, it just, it just didn't ring any bells. And the, as, you, as you guys know, it's been well documented, the process of how it went. Um, you know, I wish there were more, a few more red flags, but unfortunately there wasn't. What's it like sitting there watching that stuff back now, four years on? You've obviously got hindsight and a bit yeah. of distance between it all. Is it still hit yeah, pretty hard? Yeah, it is. It's, um, I mean, if anything, I get to, I know I can take a few highlights out of, you know, what I did in those first five years at least. And hearing Louis speak, it sort of uh, it's really, it gets me a bit emotional actually. Like, he's, he's a awesome guy, one of the, as you guys know, one of the really good guys of rugby league, and to hear him say that um, about, about myself means a lot, and uh, he's someone I idolise, but it also just makes, it's, you know, the, the fire's burning, so I really want to come back, and I guess I hope, hopefully get to touch on that more about why, and, um, you know, the reasons why I do want to do that. So why do you want to come back to the game? You're obviously still really passionate yeah. about it. Yeah, well, you know, I put my whole life into, I started playing rugby league when I was three, um, my mum got me into football, and, you know, it stopped abruptly when I was 23, but I guess um, I want to go out on my own terms, and part of that is not only wanting to achieve more in rugby league, but it's also wanting to come back and, um, you know, really as yeah, to go out on my own terms and make up for something that, um, you know, I, I don't think should have happened. You've used the term scapegoat to, I guess, describe your situation. When the words peptides and injections, self-administered injections, were used in that infamous press conference, mm. did it make you stand up and listen? Before you even heard the, the name Stephen Dank, did you think I could be in some trouble here? Um, not really. I, to be honest, I'd never even seen that press conference uh, when it happened. I don't actually remember that press conference as such. But, um, you know, probably if I had heard it and I heard the word peptide, possibly it would have uh, mm. rung a bell, yeah. How did, it, how did you feel when, you know, we saw... The Sharks players, 17 of them, including Paul Gallen, mm. um, they had suspended, well, they backdated their, their sentences, so I think they only missed about three weeks. How did you feel sitting a long way from home watching them pretty much go about their business? Was there a sense of that this wasn't fair or did you really think that honestly, honesty wasn't the best policy for your case? Yeah, at the time, definitely. Um, unfair is something that is, it's, it's really hard to describe. Like, the feeling of being helpless is not something I ever want to feel like again. Um, you know, when you truly feel like that you're, you're not being treated fairly, um, not only amongst the NRL, but individually, and then the fact that you really can't do anything about it, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow. But again, for the Sharks, as much as it was probably a different case to mine, I don't hold any, any you know, regret about them or the way they got done. At the end of the day, uh, what happened with, with them and with Dank, it's a separate situation, but I'm glad that they only got that certain amount of punishment. I mean, the protocols... I think around how it happened, how Dank was even in a club. I think that's really what shed the light. So when they got three weeks, I wouldn't say I was happy, but I was, I was happy for them that that was the outcome for them. Although it wasn't mine, um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm glad that was their situation. You've had time to reflect on everything that you went through. You've had four years. Do you regret doing what you did? Oh, I, I mean, I would definitely go about things differently, but in hindsight... Um, what would you do differently then? I wouldn't, I wouldn't see Stephen Dank and I wouldn't receive the treatment that I did for my shoulders. Um, you know, was, looking back, it's completely unnecessary, really. But at the time, it didn't seem like um, such a bad idea. But I guess the person I've become and the, the way I've been able to grow and mature, it just wouldn't have happened. And that's, that's the reality of the situation. I'm so grateful for football and everything it's done for me, but um, there's more to life than rugby league. And, you know, I can stand here today and say rugby league doesn't define me as a person. You know, I've got family, partner, you know, I've got so much else going on in life. And being able to step away, understand that and realise how much it really is out there, travelling, meeting people that I would never have met, just outside my circle and my bubble. And, you know, it's hard to sit back and go, would I change anything? Because all these experiences that I've had and the person I stand here today just wouldn't have happened. So because of that, um, you know, adversity has brung out the best in me. So... Having said that, do you still love rugby league? Yeah, I do. I mean, as I said, it's 23 years of my life. I'll always love it. I follow it passionately. Um, I'm sure you guys have sort of seen enough. I try, I'm pretty active on social media. I follow the game, follow the boys. I have a love for the Raiders. And, um, yeah, it's, and I feel like it's given me an opportunity to really, you know, I'm like a student of the game now. I just, and that's, that comes back to my mentality. I feel like I've got so much to give, but I guess it's hard to put that into words. I really need to let my actions do the talking when I get the chance and when I have a platform. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a special thing to know that when you come back, not only do I have the drive of the last four years pushing me, but, you know, that newfound respect and I'm so grateful. I think you know, every time I turn up to training and I'm able to do that, you know, I'll be so grateful knowing, you know, when it's taken away from you, what that feels like. What so are it? you going to play for a club? Have you, is there any news around potential options for you and how that all might play out at the end of the yeah, year? Yeah, not at this stage. Um, I've got an awesome manager who's not only a lifelong friend of mine, George, but, um, you know, when push comes to shove, that'll be sorted out. At the moment, I've just been building a life outside of football. I've moved back here, opened a F45 training studio in the CBD in Melbourne, so that keeps me uh, busy. That's the, the real world, up at 5am, leaving at 8. But, um, yeah, once that simmers down, um, yeah, I'll put the feelers out there and, uh, you know, see, see what comes back, I guess. Are you choosy about where you go? Is there any particular <laughs> club that you'd like to end, you know, up at? Um, no, there's no particular club, I guess. I guess in my situation, I'll take anything that comes really. Football is the priority, definitely, though. People ask me that, um, you know, with everything I'm doing outside of that. But football's definitely a priority, and that's, that's something I've been thinking about since August in 2013. It's something I haven't stopped thinking about. Are you prepared for maybe some of the backlash that might come your way from fans who say you are a drug cheat and you shouldn't be allowed to play again? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can imagine I've heard it all. But on the other side of that, I've had so much support. Um, Raiders fans is probably a particular highlight. Daily I still get messages and um, that'll be a special moment one day when I can really shed to light how important that's really been along with the support of my family and my partner but um, as much as some people only see the abuse, maybe the abuse that I get, there's been so much support and so many people have really you know, pushed me along over these four years. You took off pretty quickly to Thailand. Tell us about that decision um, and was that to avoid I guess some of the backlash initially? Yeah definitely I mean uh, 23 year old Chandor couldn't really handle that stuff and it was a lot to handle you know um, as I told you getting on the plane and being plastered over the front of the newspaper it was pretty full on but getting away to Thailand where I'd already been before it was an opportunity to just escape all that and um, no one knew or cared over there so it was probably the best thing for me and then also moving on um, not sitting there stewing on everything that happened I got into some business stuff kept busy and that was really it was the best decision I could have made, I think. Were there players that, you know, really backed you and that were in your corner the whole way that perhaps didn't seek the limelight and come out and say, you know, we're behind Chandor Earl in this battle, but that you sought refuge from? Yeah, I guess I've always been quite independent in that sense. Um, you know, I have a newfound, especially these days with uh, mental illness, I have a few newfound appreciation with depression and stuff, but... It's just that not the way I really handled things, so I just wanted to move forward, really wanted to, you know, attack things, move on. But obviously my close mates of the Raiders have always been supportive and, um, you know, that's, that's special. It's, it is something you think about and I will think about uh, later this year, 
who who was and wasn't there. I guess that comes with the territory when something like that happens. So, so they were a few disappointing people then. Uh, not so much disappointing, but I guess um, there's, there's definitely some uh, memories there that'll come come back to light when the time comes. You know what I mean? Mm. Have you dared to dream, or thought about what it will feel like to put those footy boots back on and run out on the field and play your first game back in the NRL? <laughs> yeah, every day. Um, it's it's it is something special that I've thought about and um, that I continue to think about, and I guess that spurs me on. I you know, I go to, I train now four or five times a week, pretty intense um, to fulfill that dream I've juggled that with real life you know work and stuff like that so as I said I'm I'm so grateful and understanding of when I get back how much every second will mean to me but yeah I've you know I'll, I'm happy to put it out there um, and I think that's the way you should I want to come back I want to do something great whether I showed enough for people to believe that um, at a young age when I first started that's fine but yeah I really want to let my actions do the talking and I believe I can come back and do that. August 29 will be a very special day for you. We wish you all the best. It'll be one of the most remarkable comebacks that Rugby League has ever seen. We really appreciate your time oh, tonight, Chandler. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much.